Hi everyone, you're currently listening to the Uyghur Genocide Podcast. I'm Meher Haider from Saratoga High School, and I'm joined by Asad Khan. Today we're going to talk about the stages of genocide and how the persecution of Uyghurs in Xinjiang, China, constitutes a genocide. Thanks for listening. Well, what is a genocide? According to the UN, start quote, to constitute genocide, there must be a proven intent on the part of the perpetrators to physically destroy a national, ethical, racial, or religious group, end quote. According to Dr. Gregory H. Stanton, genocide is done in 10 stages, classification, symbolization, discrimination, dehumanization, organization, polarization, preparation, persecution, extermination, and denial. It is important to understand that many of these stages are intertwined and interchanged with each other. There is no formula for the atrocious acts of genocide, yet most genocides in history follow the pattern of these ten stages. And that brings us to our first stage, classification. Classification, in short, is when people of a certain race, ethnicity, or religion are discriminated against, therefore creating an us-versus-them mentality in society. And that's exactly what China's government is basically doing. Yes, exactly. In 1949, the People's Republic of China annexed Xinjiang. At the time, the Uyghurs consisted 76% of the population and the Han Chinese constituted 6.2%. Since 1949, the Chinese government sponsored immigration of Han Chinese to Xinjiang to dilute the Uyghurs population. The statistics in 2000 showed the population now consists of 42% Uyghurs and 40% Han. In May 2014, the Chinese government initiated the Strike Hard campaign against violent terrorism in Xinjiang to control the ethnic unrest and legalize the counterinsurgency policies. Although the Chinese government has not specifically classified the Uyghurs as another, they created an us versus them mentality, weakening the Uyghurs population in size. After classifying the Uyghurs as others, the government continued to symbolize them as such. China has began to do this by gathering data on the Uyghurs. What do you mean by gathering data? Are you talking about asking them questions about themselves? No. I'm talking about taking their blood samples to track DNA, scanning their faces by using facial recognition techniques, and also recording their voices, all without their consent. For example, authorities drew blood from a 38-year-old Muslim, scanned his face, recorded his voice, and took his fingerprints. They said, start quote, you don't have the right to ask about this. If you want to know more, you can go to the police. Wow, that's terrible. Has the government said anything about this? Well, the government has justified its doings by stating that they're building a single database to sort the Uyghurs from the rest of the population. To quote the New York Times, start quote, China wants to make the country's Uyghurs, a predominantly Muslim ethnic group, more subservient to the Communist Party. It has detained up to one million people in what China calls re-education camps. That's awful. Once symbolized, the Uyghurs have now become discriminated against. For example, having a long beard and women wearing long veils in public became prohibited. Uyghurs were forced to eat pork, a meat that they are not allowed to eat in their religion, Islam. They were not allowed to fast in the holy month of Ramadan, and naming a child Muhammad or any other religiously affiliated name was made illegal. The languages in schools turned from multilingual, which included Mandarin, the Uyghur language, and Turkish, to solely Mandarin Chinese. Wait, so because of this, has it affected the economy or unemployment rates at all? Yes, it has. The unemployment rate of Uyghurs massively increased from the time the Han Chinese migrated to Xinjiang as the Uyghurs were being discriminated against in the workplace. If one is discriminated against and looked upon as less as others, then they are also looked less than human, leading on to the fourth stage, dehumanization. According to a New York-based NGO and drone footage from many different sources, the Uyghurs are being tortured. Women are being subject to forceful contraception and sterilization. Many women have also been abducted, drugged, and given medications to stop menstruation. A woman named Mehergol Tursin stated that she has been a victim of gross abuse in the euphemistically named re-education camps. Another woman named Ziudan recalls her experience as being treated like an animal. She began to break down as she recalls being 
gang raped and my private parts were tortured with electricity. She said, you're left with marks on your body that make you not want to look at yourself. All these acts targeting Uyghur women are not only dehumanizing, but are specifically targeted against women because of their ability to reproduce Uyghur offspring. The Uyghurs are now seen as inhuman. With the help of the government, society begins to polarize themselves against the Uyghurs. This occurred because the Chinese government has instilled hate against the Uyghurs, suppressing them, making them live under unlivable conditions, and brainwashing their minds to learn Chinese beliefs and religion. By polarizing the Chinese population, the government has laid the groundwork for the next step, organization. China has organized themselves for the genocide of the Uyghurs by rapidly building detention camps. A series of police files obtained by the BBC in 2022 has revealed details of China's use of so-called re-education camps and described the routine use of armed officers and the existence of a shoot-to-kill policy for those trying to escape, which leads us to the final stage. Extermination. It is reported that around 1 million Muslims are being held prisoner in these re-education camps. China denies all allegations of human rights abuses in Xinjiang. In response to the Xinjiang police files, China's foreign ministry spokesman told the BBC that the documents were, quote, the latest example of anti-China voices trying to smear China. Therefore, we have very few statistics on actual death tolls but one can infer from the conditions and stories from these camps. Another BBC article states that, quote, the Chinese government has gradually stripped away the religious and other freedoms of the Uyghurs, culminating in an oppressive system of mass surveillance, detention, indoctrination, and even forced sterilization. It is extremely evident that there is a genocide being committed against the Uyghurs. The Chinese government is intentionally, physically destroying a racial and religious group, the Uyghur Muslims. It is our responsibility to stop the atrocities being committed against these people. Please refer to the resources on our website to learn how you can help. Together, we can be the change and help the Uyghur Muslims.